so uh, it's a chronic infection um, caused by mycobacterium leprae and it affects the skin and the nerves this is meant for the younger boys and girls who may not see as often as we had seen in the past and it is less than 10% of the infected persons only develop disease all the infected persons do not uh, go on to get disease a chronic infection and based on your immunity you may be protected so what is this uh, condition uh, as you know it's a uh, chronic uh, infectious disease characterized by lesions of the peripheral nerve skin and mucous membrane of the upper respiratory tract and it is the world's oldest recorded disease and every year january last sunday is celebrated as world leprosy day and it has some relevance to india world leprosy day is observed on the last sunday in january this day is chosen by french humanitarian raul polario in 1953 and it coincides with the death anniversary of mahatma gandhi who has uh, been involved in the care of uh, patients with hansen's as one of his social activities at that time so in atharva veda 6th century bc it is mentioned as kushnaadi idi kushta so one which disfigures or deforms and uh, this is also mentioned in chara samhidya vegabatta susrada as uh, fifth chapter describes the mode of spread he describes it as contact living together and sharing utensils imagine how every time i tell about our ancestors because they were the greatest scholars uh, among, among ab about whom we are not uh, really getting reawakened so that uh, we bring back the ancient india that was ours so that is why i always uh, share this information i take some strain to get this uh, information they have clearly described numb skin altered sweating itching ulcers and reduced sensation the roughening of the skin that is the ichthyosis color changes abscess formation and uh, soft tissue of the nose gets affected and you get red eyes how clearly it is described uh, and that we should understand so the treatment used in india was uh, chalmogra oil and it was uh, it is taken from the bark of a tree but it was scientifically um, uh, evaluated and found a cure after 6 years in 30% of patients so it is uh, definitely useful in the treatment of uh, this infectious disease but it is not 100% useful like uh, now we have drugs which are 100% useful but this drug was definitely effective so our ancestors knew all the details about this Uh, uh disease then we have in the history we have got uh, transport of this oil to china from india then uh, father damian's leprosy combined and the dapson came into existence from 1908 after that the treatment of this disease became revolutionized and uh, and its de derivatives are introduced from 1940 and uh, there is a Uh, cochrane uh, introduced lifelong treatment in 1950 now we don't uh, advocate lifelong treatment there is a categorization based on which the duration of treatment varies then uh, now the sandaram yavalkar has advocated two drugs uh, and this is finalized by the who in 1981 so the lepra is a greek word meaning scales and the medieval europe people had to carry a bell it was a disease with a lot of stigma no? so uh, even now the stigma is there so medieval europe people had to carry a bell to warn they are coming and also for alms that is how they lived because uh, employment everything was not available to these patients in 1856 norway produced the first world national registry of this disease and treatments used were very uh, strange the blood of children virgin uh, snake poison frog castration and dog blood by paracelsus 
you know paracelsus was a scientist he synthesized urea in the in his lab but they use this kind of treatments and punishment for sin is uh, 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 this disease is a punishment for sin according to the old testament and leprosy act 1898 by the then government of india which passed orders to forcefully confine hansen's patients in india this was by the british who were ruling in this country at that time they produced the sanatorium where the patients were forcefully confined and it was not until the 1940s that the first effective treatment promen which is a derivative of dapsone became available and the search for additional anti leprosy drugs led to the use of clofacimin rifampicin in 1960s and the 1970s later the indian scientist sandaram evalkar and his colleagues formulated a combination therapy using rifampicin dapsone and uh, that was uh, this combination was expected to remove bacterial resistance multi drug therapy combining all three drugs was first recommended by world health organization in the united nations in 1981 these three anti leprosy drugs are still used in the standard mdt regime for treatment of hansen's disease 1897 gerhard hendrik ormer hansen identified the organism whose name is given to the uh, uh, disease the first bacteria causing human uh, disease identified and 2009 who declared 17 countries reported more than 1000 cases and global decline in incidence started from a few millions to a few hundred thousands over the last 15 years so it is a waning disease but it is still present the bacilli is gram positive it is acid and alcohol fast and divides by binary fission once in 12 to 15 days it cannot be cultured in vitro it can be cultured in armadillo and the foot pad of mouse and it is mildly infective and is an obligatory intracellular bacteria mildly infective that is why Uh, only 10% of the infected persons get uh, disease so this is the prevalence of uh, hansen's disease uh, in various reg uh, regions of the world in 2001 and india comes the um, uh, one of the countries with a very good incidence of the disease and after introduction of multi drug resistant therapy case loads have come down from 57.6 per 10000 uh, in 1981 to less than 1 at national level in december 2005 32 states and union territory have achieved the status of elimination only three states uh, are still having good patients good number of patients that is bihar chatisgarh and hawali but uh, i have seen in kerala i have seen in tamil nadu i have seen karnataka So it is there. We should not miss it. As I told, an engineering student was going from pillar to post for the last three years. But when he came to me and the diagnosis was given, I was afraid he will go and commit suicide. He came alone. So I told him to uh, bring his parents. So that is a stigma. Even if you tell them it is curable, it is not like hereditary motor sensory neuropathy. They don't want the diagnosis. so how this disease is go obtained as i told only 10% of the people who are in contact with the organism get the disease there is a genetic susceptibility which runs in families and interaction of the host immune system this results in the ineffective interaction of the host immune system and the organism the entry is through the nasal mucosa and spreads by hematological method and asymptomatic autonomic stage Uh, like the gonds focus in tuberculosis so like the gonds focus is a sub plural focus for tuberculosis uh, and this is in the nasal mucosa similar focus is there in the nasal mucosa for hansen's disease and uh, second method of entry is direct intradermal by direct contact it multiplies in the shorn cells macrophages and disseminates as infiltrating granuloma and it prefers the cooler areas of the body and commonly involved nerves are ulnar nerves 
posterior tibial nerve, dorsal cutaneous branch of the radial nerve, peroneal nerve, lateral cutaneous nerve, thigh, and sural nerve. So these are the commonly involved nerves and biopsy of the dorsal cutaneous branch of the radial nerve was introduced by Gauri Devi Madam from Newmans. And sural nerve biopsy is the one which is commonly done. But unless it is involved, we will not get the organism for, for the upper limbs. Dorsal cutaneous branch of the radial nerve in the anatomical snuff box was introduced by Professor Gauri Devi Madam. And it attaches to alpha 2 chain G unit of Schwann cell and then forms the mycobacterium lamina complex. When there is a direct intradermal infiltrate, uh, it forms this mycobacterium lamina complex, then binds to plasma membrane uh, element alpha dextroglycan and enters the cell. So after forming the complex, and it binds to the plasma membrane and pours uh, by enzymatic activity, uh, it produces holes and enters into the cell. And phenolic glycolipid of the organism binds to the complement. And myelin producing swan cells are spared, and non myelinated fibers are attacked. That is why it's a small fiber neuropathy. So, when peripheral nerve disease, yeah, I, will, I shall be doing the next session on approach to peripheral nerves. So, when there is a peripheral nerve disease, generally we expect an absent reflex. Uh, whereas, this is one disease where the reflexes are well elicited or brisk because it is unmyelinated small fiber that is affected. And that has nothing to do with the reflex. So all the more there will be confusion. Is it peripheral neuropathy? Is it something else? So one peripheral nerve disease with retained reflex means Hansen's disease. The organism stimulates swan cells to produce metalloproteinase 2 and 9, which contributes to the type of neuropathy that is going to happen. And uh, on toll-like receptor 1 and 2 correlates with the clinical picture in the tuberculoid type. So various types of immunological interactions results in the type of disease which the person is going to have. And there is increased expression of interferon gamma, interleukin 12, 18, and granulocyte colony stimulating factor in tuberculoid leprosy, and increase of interleukin 4, 5, and 10 in lepromatostite. That becomes a uh, very virulent type. And genetic susceptibility is associated with natural resistance associated macrophage protein 1, NRAMP1. So the genetic susceptibility associated with the uh, natural resistance associated macrophage protein 1 inheritance, HLA class 2, and leukocyte immunoglobulin receptor or LIR receptor. And the incubation period varies anywhere between 10 to 20 years. And males are prone for lepromatous and females are prone for Tuberculoid type. So diagnosis is 80 to 90 percent of the patients is clinical. The skin patches are anesthetic and thick palpable nerves. So split skin smear and nasal soft histopathology. And well done in uh, six millimeter deep punch biopsy of the skin. So that is uh, what is to be done. You have to do at least a six millimeter deep punch biopsy. Otherwise, it may turn out to be negative and still the patient will go without a, uh, treatment. So next, how to examine the patient? We have to examine the whole body, whole body, because somewhere we might find the patch, patient may not know, we may not know. It is in the cold areas, usually in the gluteal region, axilla, back. So this may, patient may not see and ask for the duration of symptoms, and ask for the treatment triad, and test for sensations. A well-lit room is important, and visible deformity should be documented. And graded sensory testing is done using monofilament. Cold and hot testing uh, done using thermal sensory analyzer, because vibration will be usually spared, and cold and uh, heat will be affected. Pain heat and cold will be affected, whereas vibration will be spared. And you can uh, test other sensations using, like two-point discrimination and triple threshold test, voluntary muscle function test, electrophysiology, nerve biopsy, skin biopsy, ultrasound assessment of nerves, and MR imaging, contact heat, your potential, corneal 
confocal microscopy, all these can be done to find out whether what are the extent of involvement. MR imaging is done because uh, it is known that nothing is paid by the uh, disease. Even the brain and the spinal cord can be involved. We think it's mainly a disease of the skin and the peripheral nerves and the nasal mucosa, but lesions which resemble granulomas are noticed in the brain as well as in the spinal cord. So that will be very extensive disease when it happens. Uh, these things all happen. <clears throat> So what are all the rapid quantitative serological tests for detection of infection? One is uh, IgM antibody test for mycobacterium leprae. You can look for IgM antibody. Then you can look for specific uh, prostaglandin 1 through the use of NDO bovine serum and albumin NDO BSA synthetic mimetic of uh, um, PGL1 and conjugated to BSA while NDO LID detects IgM antibodies to BGL1 and IgG antibodies specific to LID1. So this is a very rapid test. Of course, skin biopsy, if it is positive, complicated tests are not needed. So IgM and IgG uh, antibodies which are specific to Hansen's disease related uh, uh, target foci can be identified very fast test. Uh, nine branded armadillo is another organism which normally gets infected with this disease. So this is uh, usually seen in African countries, I am told. So what is this? After you have done the skin biopsy and you have examined the skin, uh, you have got something called bacteriological uh, index. Supposing you see no bacteria in 100 fields, it is reported for so minimum 100 fields should be examined and you see no bacteria, it is reported as negative. If you see 1 to 10 bacteria in 100 fields, that is reported as bacteriological index 1. So that is to grade the severity of the disease. If you see 1 to 10 bacteria in 10 fields, it is bacteriological index 2. 1 to 10 bacteria in every field, every single field, then the bacteriological index is 3. If you find 10 to 100 bacteria in each field, it is 4. And 100 to 1,000 bacteria in each field, it is 5. And 1,000 or more bacteria per field, that is the highest uh, uh, infection and the person will be highly infective. And that is bacteriological index of 6. Then uh, Ridley and jo Joplin, 1962, uh, classified the disease into uh, based on clinical, histological, immunological, and bacteriological characters into tuberculoid, tuberculoid, borderline, tuberculoid, borderline, 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 lepromatous, and lepromatous, lepromatous. Then there were minor modifications made for intermediary cases, that is tubercular intermediary or lepromatous intermediary. That things were added to include cases which were slightly deviant from the criteria that were applied by Ridley and Joplin. Then WHA 1982 classified it into Ponzi bacillary and multi bacillary. Ponzi bacillary means one to five skin lesions and multi bacillary more than six skin lesions. The latest now uh, what we adopted is the Ponzi bacillary bar multi bacillary based on the number of skin lesions. So clinical presentation, it involves the skin, nerves, eye, all the cranial nerves, brain, spinal cord, everything can be involved. But the skin, nerves, eyes, ears, joints, testis, breast, adrenal gland, kidney, liver, spleen, and some secondary amyloidosis resulting in autonomic dysfunction. And in addition, there can be brain and spinal cord lesions. There is enough literature on that, even though it is not that common. So as you know, this is a normal nerve. There is a nerve trunk and there are so many fascicles and nerve fibers are there. And, uh, and the normal nerve has got endoneurium, epineurium and the perineurium. And... Uh, uh, so, where is the disease going to affect? It is going to affect the unmyelinated small fiber. So, when there is a patient with the symptom, we will look at the time, pa time pattern 
time, pattern, fiber type, etiology, and pathology. Somebody coming with a, a symptom referable to the peripheral now, you ask about the uh, time scale. And what, is it a distal symmetrical mixed pattern or is it a mononeuritis multiplex pattern? Or is it a large fiber, a small fiber? And what is the etiology and what is the pathology? So now, so now when uh, now let us see that our patient has got a uh, pattern which resembles a uh, infectious disease. So we have diagnosed Hansen's disease. So I, I will tell the approach to peripheral nerve disease uh, next week. So so we have got uh, several types: neuropathic type, that is polar, uh, two polar. One is the tubercular, another is the lepromatous, and in between is the borderline. So uh, one end there is a tuberculoid type, and these are the neuropathy maybe of polar types. Uh, one is the tuberculoid type, another is the lepromatous. Lepromatous produces distal symmetrical mixed neuropathy. Tuberculoid produces mononeuritis multiplex, and in between you have got the borderline varieties, and you have got uh, reactions. You can have type one reaction and type two reaction. Type two reaction is erythema. Neuro um, uh, nodosum leprosum, and you can have um, neuritis. I will be elaborating all this. You can have neuritis, which is acute, subacute, or chronic. Sometimes it can be an acute presentation also. And you can have silent neuropathies, and uh, you can have uh, late onset uh, leprosy, late onset neuropathy type. So, uh, so neuropathy can come late. So, nervous system can be affected later and the initial lesions may be not neurological. So these are the ways in which the nervous system becomes affected. And uh, you have got the intermediary, uh, intermediary variety of leprosy, where usually single macule or patch is there and hypopigmented or faintly erythematous patch. Sensations are normal, but sometimes impaired. The peripheral nerves are normal and slit skin smear is negative. So you have to do the biopsy to be uh, uh, confirmation. Then polar tuberculoid type, often single nerve. Caseation and abscess formation can be there like ulnar nerve abscess. Patient may present with an abscess of the ulnar nerve. And there is lymphocytic infiltration. Endoneurium, we saw that the perineurium, epineurium, uh, perineurium, epineurium, the endoneurium. The endoneurium becomes fibrosed and shows epithelioid granuloma. And these are the patches. We can see the hypopigmented patches. Uh, they are uh, having well-defined borders and they are generally uh, negative for skin biopsy and the palp nerves become nerves are palpable. Then we'll come to the borderline. And uh, there can be uh, very not uh, pre initial type, tubercular type one patch usually. Here you find it. Uh, many asymmetrical patches and they have uh, partly well-defined borders and sensory impairment ranges from slight impairment to marked and slit skin smear usually positive and peripheral nerves are asymmetrically enlarged. So if this, the, the number of patches are more, smear becomes positive and yes, mononeuritis multiplex pack, then you call it as borderline leprosy. It is in between tubercloid and lepromatous. So that is, uh, then we have got borderline, more than one nerve becomes in, uh, involved and infiltration consists of lymphocytes, macrophage, swan cells, and swan cells show the bacilli, and endo, uh, endonerium will show the epithelial granuloma and edema, and reversal reactions are common. Two types of reactions happen, one is the reversal reaction, second is the erythema nodosum leprosum, what is that we will say. And these are the type of patches we find in this kind of patients, uh, which is the second grade uh, from the uh, into the borderline. Then we have how uh, uh, we can see the differences between all these borderline tuberculosis, borderline borderline, and borderline lepromatous. So lesion number for borderline tuberculosis is uh, less than five, and it is uh, borderline borderline is little more than five. And this is the borderline lepromatous. There are uh, more, uh, many, many patches are there. Then we will come to the lesion borders are well defined in tubercloid. They are less well defined in borderline, borderline. 
and they are uh, rough and ill defined in lepromat borderline lepromatous and sensory impairment is marked in borderline tuberculosis bo moderate in borderline borderline and it is very less in lepromatous and distribution of skin lesions is asymmetrical in borderline tuberculosis and borderline borderline whereas in borderline lepromatous it is symmetrical peripheral nerves are asymmetrically involved in borderline tuberculosis and borderline borderline but they are symmetrical in lepromatous uh, and in the borderline tuberculosis it is passi bacillary and other two it is multi bacillary the bacteriological index is usually uh, 1 plus in borderline tuberculosis other other two it is uh, much higher now we'll come to the lepromatous type here you get a glove and stocking type of uh, hypostasia so peripheral nerve involvement is not mononeuritis multiplex here it is a uh, glove and stocking length dependent peripheral neuropathy there is minimal inflammation because there is very poor immunological response from the patient so inflammation is very minimal and heavy bacilli in the shown cells intraneural macrophage foam cells demyelination and destruction and there is endoneural fibrosis and uh, very numerous ill defined lesions you will find in these patients and they are symmetrically distributed unlike the other conditions where they are asymmetrically distributed here it is symmetrically distributed all over the body and there is loss of eyebrows and eyelashes and no sensory impairment is seen in the lesions and the peripheral nerves are symmetrically enlarged and slit skin smear is always positive so now we have got uh, reactions one is the type 1 reaction second is the type 2 reaction type 1 reaction is reversal reaction what do you understand by reversal reaction is one type becomes converted into another type based on the immunological alteration in the patient so borderline tuberculosis might become converted into borderline borderline or borderline lepromatous that is the reversal reaction. that is called type 1 reaction or reversal reaction type 2 reaction is uh, uh, patients get erythema nodosum leprosum and here the borderline lepro, uh, borderline becomes lepromatous so that's a type 2 reaction and they get this uh, nodular lesions and the reactions can occur at any time and 25 percent of borderline cases and 63 percent of uh, um, moderate cases in six months of multi-drug uh, therapy become non-infectious so by six months treatment uh, um, even the borderline and the multibacillary cases uh, become non-infectious. So after six months, the patient's chance of spreading the disease to others becomes less. So why do these reversal reactions happen? It is uh, delayed hypersensitivity to mycobacterium leprae and increased T cell activity, CD4 and lymphocytes and inflammation affecting the skin and, skin and the nerves only. A nerve destruction, caseation, edema, granuloma, and abscess formation. Type 2 reaction is erythema nodosum leprosum. Here there is immune complex deposition, type 3 immune complex deposition, and there is increased polymorphs and tumor necrosis factor alpha. So this results in vasculitis, edema, cellular disintegration, dense polymorph, and bacilli infiltration, and nerve structure is preferred. Uh, preserved. Unlike the type 1 reaction, where only the skin and the nerves get affected, in type 2 reaction, there is other system involvement, like involvement of the eyes, liver, spleen, lymph nodes, testis, muscles, and joints. So, patient gets into a very stormy course when there is a type 2 reaction with involvement of other organs. <clears throat> so, what is this neuritic form? Only nerves affected, we call it as neuritic form. So you can, as I said, the another, one another pattern of presentation, even though it is incubation period of 10 to 20 years, uh, sometimes soon after contact it can manifest. So you, that is acute presentation is less than two months after contact and symptom uh, is less than two months. They have tender nerves and they have more reaction. Subacute is more than three months and moderate tenderness. Chronic is more than six months and mild pain. So we can see that the uh, organisms uh, go into the interstitia, uh, Schwann cells, uh, then uh, they, uh, 
they destroy the less myelinated uh, fibers and interstitium becomes thickened and fibrous and uh, organism becomes intracellular um, by penetrating into the plasma membrane. Entry through the blood vessels, inflammatory response and demyelination. So this is a patient showing the uh, classical presentation of uh, ulnar client. And this is chorioretinitis. Patients develop can develop chorioretinitis. This is the classical ice cone appearance. Bone resorption. And the, because of the resorption, the tip of the bones become like ice cone. So this is called ice cone appearance, uh, which is very typical of Hansen's disease. And this is a patient showing bilateral cloying, median nerve, ulnar nerve, all are involved. There is mononeuritis multiplex pattern. And the cranial nerves involved commonly are olfactory, trigeminal nerve, facial nerve, uh, branches get involved because of that. And the eyes may become open uh, and the rest of the face may be not involved, resulting in the leonine phases. Six nerve can, all the cranial nerves can be involved, but commonly olfactory, trigeminal, facial and abdicin nerves get involved. So we do this uh, lepramine test. So that is a, uh, like a Mando test for tuberculosis. This is lepramine test. Here you have got two types of reaction. One is the, like, you have the primary reaction that is type 1 and type 2. That is reversal reaction. This is a reaction to lepramine test. When you do the lepramine test, there is there are two reactions. One is the Mitsuda reaction. Second is the Fernandez reaction. Mitsuda reaction is intradermal challenge with bacilli done and response tested after three weeks. Uh, positive in posi bacillary and negative in multi bacillary type of uh, Hansen's disease. So, Mitsu, uh, Fernandez reaction is a immediate allergic reaction. So, Mitsuda reaction is just like the Mando and it helps us to identify the type of uh, immunity the patient is having. If the Mitsuda reaction is positive, patient has got a better immunity and the outcome is better and probably has a posi bacillary type. It's an indirect. Uh, way of testing the posi bacillary type, direct way is just looking at the skin smear only. And Fernandez reaction is an immediate reaction that only indicates a hypersensitivity reaction to the intradermal. So to wait for three weeks, unlike Manto test, we check within 72 hours. Uh, Lepramine test, we have to wait for three weeks to see the reaction. <clears throat> what is uh, recurrence? Uh, the recurrence is defined as uh, occurrence of the disease after completion of multidrug therapy. So if it recurs after completion of multidrug therapy, uh, it is called relapse. And the differential diagnosis, uh, uh, you have to understand that neuropathy in Hansen's disease is non-length dependent. Even the lepromatous, you know, the classical length dependent, I will be doing the next session. It will be only when the lower limb reaches the knee, the upper limb will be reached. That is classical length dependent. Whereas you may have symmetrical glove and stocking. So neuropathy in is typically non-length dependent. Autonomic and small fibers are mostly involved. Reflexes are retained in most cases. That is what I told. So we will, think, we will um, fail to think it is a peripheral neuropathy in a very busy OPD. And mononeuropathy is very common. And tender beaded thick nerves. The nerves are not just thick, they are tender and beaded. The beading is seen can be easily palpated in the over the fibula, neck of the fibula, and as well as above the olecranon process, you can look for the beading. <clears throat> other situations where the nerve thickening occurs are many other conditions are there. Uh, Hansen's disease specifically involves the greater auricular nerve. Radial cutaneous branches that you can look at this extensor hyalysis longest tendon and put your fingers along the tendon. You will feel the dorsal cutaneous nerve, branch of the radial nerve, very filament, the hair like nerve, which goes into the anatomical snuff box that you can palpate and you will find it is thick. And supraorbital, anterior tibial, ulnar, and common peroneal nerves are thick. Other conditions where the nerves become thick are diabetes mellitus, amyloidosis, neurofibromatosis, Raphson's disease, Dijerin Sota disease, and Rousey Levy syndrome. They will have different clinical features by that we will be able to identify. 
other causes of small fiber neuropathy are hereditary sensory neuropathy, diabetes, amyloid, tangiers, fabris, uh, Riley Day syndrome, HIV, and antiretroviral therapy induced neuropathy. So, these are other differential diagnoses for small fiber neuropathy. That means reflexes are retained. Then, uh, mono neuropathy uh, multiplex. What are all the uh, causes? So, uh, what is this mono neuropathy multiplex? You know, the scatty. They are not uh, scattered involvement of nerves. They are not distal, symmetrical like that. They are uh, involved in a patchy way. This can happen in uh, many diseases, inflammatory disease like Hansen's disease and sarcoid, vascular diseases like diabetes, pressure, hereditary neuropathy with tendency for pressure palsies or traumatic neuropathies. Then vasculitic neuropathies like polyarthritis nodosa, scleroderma, and immune-mediated other post-vaccinal neuropathies. So these are so it is all this you should remember, but the diagnosis based on the other accompanying features. In the investigations you can do electrophysiology to confirm neuropathy, skin examination to find out the cause and nerve biopsy to establish the uh, uh, infectivity and uh, infiltration, the type of infiltration which cells are involved. All that is confirmed by uh, biopsy, either of the skin or the nerve based on the case. Then you, uh, why are you doing electrophysiology? To confirm the anatomy, uh, nerve can, uh, identifies the anatomical pattern and population of fibers involved and part of the neurons involved, whether it is axon or myelin. So that is the use of uh, electrophysiology. And this is how the uh, hair, uh, the ear lobe <coughs> Slit smear is taken. Uh, you may uh, pinch the site tightly. Or to tightly pinch the site. Make a slight incision and scrape and collect the material and smear on a slide. Air dry and fix and stain with seal nations method. Then lepromine skin test, we said we have got Mitsuda reaction and Fernandez reaction. A tiny sample of the leprosy antigen is injected under the skin, usually in the forearm. The skin gets pushed up, forming a small bump. And this is an indication that the antigen has been injected to the correct depth. The site of the injection is marked and is examined for reaction. First, after three days, early reaction or the Fernandez reaction, that is redness and induration. And then again, after 21 days, that is late reaction, Mitsuda reaction, that indicates the type of Hansen's disease, that is tuberculoid will be Positive lepromatous will be negative. Then biopsy, uh, you, you can take a uh, whole thickness of the nerve uh, is preferred. And uh, sensory nerve, which can be sacrificed, is usually biopsied. Usually, sural nerve or the dorsal cutaneous branch of the radial nerve. And drop carefully into 2 to 3 percent glutaryl dehyde solution or other commercially available glutarol dehyde or 10% buffered formalin and transported at room temperature to the laboratory. Detailed and relevant clinical features including nerve conduction studies and working diagnosis should be provided to the pathologist. So we have got other neuropathies which have distinct patterns uh, which are the differential diagnosis of this condition that the pathologist will look for. Then what are the granulomatous neuropathies? We have this uh, sarcoid, leprosy, weakness, granulomata, lymphomatoid, granulomatosis, Chuck Stoss disease, angioimmunoblastic lymphadenopathy. All these conditions show granuloma. So they have become pathologist differential diagnosis. So you have to give a clinical feature clearly. So you can see foamy cells. So uh, after you have given the clinical history, the pathologist looks for the differential diagnosis and how these different conditions are differentiated. So you see foamy cells. So that will be one. Then the differential diagnosis becomes narrowed. Leprosy versus lipistrol disease. Epithelial cells, leprosy versus sarcoidosis. Polymorphic inflammatory infiltrate. Acute necrotizing vasculitis, lymphomatoid granulomas. So based on the clinical picture, uh, these parameters will be given significance. So uh, leprosy can have foamy cells, epithelial cells, uh, polymorphic infiltrate, uh, infiltrate, plasma cells, and atypical mononuclear cells. All these uh, can be there. 
and based on the other uh, correlating with the uh, various features, the final diagnosis will be given if it is uh, not having bacilli. If bacilli is there, diagnosis becomes straightforward. Then perineurium will show thickness, layering and presence of vacuolated or inflammatory cells and uh, non-specific thickening can happen in any nerves. So it is not very useful. Whereas in leprosy, you find perineural inflammation, not just thickening of the nerve fiber, but inflammation. Microfascicle formation uh, can be seen and you can see the uh, uh, lipidized cells accumulate in leprosy and other story research. The pathology, there are so many features. Why you should give the detailed clinical picture and probable clinical diagnosis? Because if the bacilli is not seen, the diagnosis is by exclusion for the pathologist also. Because all the things that we see can be seen in many conditions. Uh, regeneration can be seen. So we have to give the clinical history to the pathologist. So uh, as we have seen, the spectrum is tuberculoid and lepromatous. And diagnosis is skin biopsy and nerve biopsy. And uh, pure neurotic form, nerve biopsy is uh, important and skin biopsy can be negative. And you can see the uh, bacilli, cigar bundle appearance. And these are the foam cells and uh, uh, inflammatory cells are there. And you see the bacilli there. And you see the Langhorne giant cell, the granuloma formation, tuberculoid leprosy, where these granulomas are commonly seen. Okay, pathology is not very uh, important for us. You see the classical cigar bundles. These are the cigar bundles. And in the Newman's registry, uh, in 10 years, 83 patients have been seen as per the report of our pathologist. It is relatively rare only because only referred cases come there. Common cases do not come. Still, we have got 83 cases. Outside, there will be more cases. So there is something called a morphology, bacteriological index 0 to 6. I have seen, I have told in the beginning only. There is something called morphological index. The percentage of living bacilli to the total number of bacilli in the smear is called a morphological index. So solid staining bacilli are considered uh, living. So solid staining bacilli are considered living. And what is morphological index is the percentage of living bacilli to the total number of bacilli. That is solid staining bacilli versus scattered staining bacilli. These are the solid staining ones. These are scattered pigments. So they are dead ones. So that is the morphological index. Then you have got various Antibody test like um, tuberculosis, we can look for uh, monoclonal antibodies, ELISA test, all these. They are not always uh, uh, needed, they are only needed in specific uh, conditions where you strongly suspect and uh, you are unable to. Recently, we had a patient uh, who had a strong family history. His father, his aunt, and he was affected. So, people imagined hereditary neuropathy. But you know that they live closely knit. They share the uh, same immunological status. So the because of the uh, family, and this is the immunological proneness to getting the disease is there. Be various uh, HLA association, all those factors I told. So this can be very misleading. Three members were affected, so people sent for genetics. But uh, um, they live together. They share the same immunological susceptibility. So apparently it can mimic an inherited neuropathy even clinically. So you have to be very carefully looking for and various symptoms are treated with a drug that we commonly use to uh, address the symptoms. Most important thing is to not miss this case even now. Then you have got uh, treatment for the various symptoms uh, like analgesics uh, and uh, uh, sympathetomy, warm packs, hydrotherapy, acupuncture, all those things. Then you have got uh, dry eyes. Tarsography, elbow and knee padding, avoid trauma to insensitive parts of the hands, shoes, and frequent positioning changes and alternative pressure mattresses so that the severe deformity of the disease doesn't happen. And you have got uh, education. So close contact of young children should be avoided with patients with uh, the well-known diseases 
and they may they are more all the more if their bacteriological index and morphological index are in the wrong side they are likely to infect the younger generation of that family and the patients once they are affected they should have good nutrition vitamins and protection of affected parts avoid contractures and uh, who gives the drug free worldwide so worldwide the drug is available for free so uh, so there is no difficulty in uh, getting treated patients should be counseled it's a treatable disease so they should not feel sad that they got this disease there is no stigma it is like any other infection and all uh, principle of treatment all patients should receive polypharmacy recommended duration based on classification is mandatory after completion active follow up is not needed when in doubt uh, treat it as multibacillary we have possibacillary and multibacillary possibacillary shorter course is there but if you are not sure uh, we have not tested the affected fields we have tested a unaffected field so that kind of thought process is there and our calculation of the bacteriological index is so three skin lesion alone single dose of rifampicin oxacillin oxacillin and minicycline is sufficient and uh, if you have possibacillary type rifampicin once a month and dapson uh, or dapson is given 100 mg uh, for 6 to 9 months rifampicin is once per month dapson daily for 6 to 9 months and a multibacillary type rifampicin 600 mg plofasmin 300 mg monthly plofasmin 50 mg and dapson annually daily for 12 to 24 months this recommendation you will get from your textbooks so this is how uh, the packs look so people can identify uh, the uh, packs are different for the uh, possibacillary and the multibacillary type and what is the role of steroids low dose steroids are given lepromatous type to prevent the nerve function impairment for a short term and when there is a reversal reaction uh, when the skin and the nerves get affected uh, in the reversal reaction type 1 patients develop severe painful deformities so that time you have to give a high dose of steroids to prevent contractures sometimes thalidomide and clofisamine uh, is given in type 2 reaction which involves systemic uh, involvement of the skin liver spleen all those organs get affected then steroids along with thalidomide and clofisamine is useful in type 2 reactions the second line drugs are minocycline fluoroquinolones uh then clarithromycin and surgery for nerve entrapment and compression abscesses and rehabilitation methods then substitution therapy um then either uh, you can do if the person is having some kind of uh, sensitivity to uh, dapson then you give ofloxacin minocycline clofasamin uh, for 6 months and then clofasamin 50 mg with either oxacycline or minocycline and ofloxacin 400 mg or clarithromycin for 3 months then clarithromycin minocycline clofasamin all this you will get from your uh, literature it is uh, not difficult and interferon gamma can be used in lepromatous type and cyclosporin in addition to steroids if the type 1 reaction is extremely painful and severe contractures are happening you can use cyclosporins then follow up is yearly clinical examination and annual uh, skin smear uh, examination in positive cases and we have got several programs national leprosy control program national leprosy education program and the prevalence has considerably dropped and uh, in a very significant way but uh, elimination has not happened so young people are getting affected if you miss it and many people the recent engineering student i told he was continuously receiving steroids only with a diagnosis of inflammatory neuropathy so he will uh, become converted into uh, more virulent forms of the disease and bcg gives some protection <coughs> steroids protect against um, nerve damage repeat bcg dose is it useful we do not know dna based vaccines are being tried but they have not been proved and patient and public education and contact detection and isolation 
I told your family where the parents, aunt, father and the son affected. So it is very important to educate the people and prevent the contact. By six months of treatment, they became uh, non-infective. So that should be told to them. And at that period, they should remain uh, from infecting their own family members. It's a straightforward topic only. But I just thought I will put it because this disease has not been eradicated. It is still there. And uh, the declining incidence uh -huh. by uh, our Nala uh, missing the cases. So recently I happened to see uh, two cases. One is the family, another is a single case, an engineering student. So 